year ago, I took a photo that would forever change my life. Last year was my senior year here at Kent State, and I was one of the most vocal political activists at the school. Week after week, I'd be out on campus fighting for free speech, for the Second Amendment, and for capitalism. But the school was so liberal that they never took my message seriously. Even after my cameraman was assaulted on camera, nothing changed. And that made me fearful for my friends who I'd be leaving behind as I graduated. So one week after this, I decided to organize an open carry demonstration at Kent State so college students could be exposed to something they will never learn in the classroom. I wanted to bring real gun owners to campus so that the students on campus could see that gun owners are not scary. Gun owners just want to protect themselves and their loved ones, and that guns are just an object. There was so much positive conversation to come out of that event that I really felt confident that the policies I fought against for years might finally change, or at the very least, be brought into question. But they never were, and the administration scoffed at me every step of the way, demeaning all of the peaceful gun owners who showed up to simply exercise their constitutional rights and to have a really good conversation with students who are curious about guns. I put way too much time into fighting for my rights on campus to let my efforts go to waste, so when I graduated from Kent State a few weeks later, I wanted to do something big for the whole world to see what I stood for. I told my boyfriend at the time, and now fiance, Justin, that I wanted to put something cool on my graduation cap for everyone to see. And after I said I wanted come and take it written on my cap, he gave me an amazing idea that I never anticipated would have changed my life. Since Kent State's policy prohibits students from carrying firearms on campus, but not guests, Justin said I should come back to campus with a rifle after I graduate to show how I couldn't even conceal carry my handgun as a student, but could come back with an AR-10 and a 30 round magazine strapped to my back later that same day. And I thought what better place to fight for my right to self-defense than Kent State, a campus where four unarmed students were shot and killed by the government in 1970. So graduation day came and I never actually end up walking but my family came up to celebrate with me anyway and help make sure that I left behind the kind of legacy that I wanted to. My brother is literally the biggest firearms enthusiast I know, and he is honestly who helped me get into guns and into the Second Amendment, and he loaned me his Palmetto State PA-10 and AR-15 for the day. It was raining like crazy, and even after I had gotten my cute white dress on and my heels, I was ready to scrap the idea altogether because I was bummed out by the rain. If you ever have curly hair, you know what happens in the rain. But Justin and my family encouraged me to go through with it, so we hopped in the car and drove here to Kent State. And sure enough, it stopped raining just enough for me to grab that photo. We were immediately greeted by a campus police officer in the parking lot. Since I called beforehand to let them know I would be here taking photos, I didn't want to cause any trouble. I don't know why he had to search my car, but he did and inspected the rifles in my dad's trunk to make sure they were unloaded. Even though I would have every single right, legal right, for them to be loaded on campus. Then we came up here to these steps, got the AR-10 out of the bag, and got right to snapping photos. I honestly only envisioned my graduation photo only being taken by the stairs, but Justin suggested that we should get some more by the fountain since it's super pretty. We were only probably down here for 10 minutes since we started hearing thunder rolling, but we were able to get the one photo that made the biggest impact. He put the camera on burst mode and told me just to walk away from him with the rifle on my back, and the rest is history. As soon as we hit that upload button online, my whole entire life would never be the same, and what happened next was not something I would have ever expected. The photo started blowing up online, but not because I had support for the photo but because liberals on Twitter hated it so much that they made it go viral all around the world. In fact, it didn't even go viral from my own Twitter account since I only had 500 followers at the time, but from some website called Drunk America that re-uploaded my photo and it blew up everywhere because this one guy decided to share it and compare me to a school shooter. His tweet got half a million likes, 
and after my name was attached to it, I was getting hundreds of followers by the minute and countless death threats. And honestly, at that point, I wanted to delete my Twitter, and I wanted to hide from all the hateful messages I was getting. But because of the support of Justin and my family, I eventually learned to ignore it and become a stronger person because of it. After the photo, I can't even count how many interviews I did. My first interview was with a local NBC affiliate, and after that, I was contacted by the Washington Post, USA Today, and the Daily Mail. And then what really changed my life more than anything was when I got a phone call from Fox News asking if I could come on Fox and Friends to talk about my photo. There were a few different shows on Fox that wanted me to come on, but they sold me on Fox and Friends because they said President Trump watches every morning and I thought that would be so cool. I can't even describe how nervous I was going into the interview, but I don't think I could have handled it any better than I did. Would you do it again? I would do it again, and I wish that I could do it with a fully automatic machine gun. I really thought my fame was going to end with my interview on Fox, but boy was I dead wrong. I think I may have gone more viral for that interview than I did for my photo itself, because at that point, hit pieces were starting to be written about me. In fact, the Young Turks had an entire segment dedicated to talking about me, and so did Vice. Where's my nuclear submarine? Uh, I have to fight tyranny. Yeah. I have to fight tyranny. First of all, that's not even a look. That good does not go with that dress, Caitlin. Then Shannon Watts, the founder of Moms Demand Action, started attacking me on Twitter for my Fox interview, telling me that I have white privilege because I wasn't arrested for taking a photo with a gun, even though it's 100% legal. In fact, the most famous gun control advocates of 2018, David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez, went after me on Twitter as well, and shared memes of me photoshopped into the 1970 Kent State shootings. Things started to slowly die down again from there, and I thought that was the end of the ride for me. But Jim Carrey decided he wanted to make me famous again, and he literally drew a photo of me in front of the devil to try blaming me for a school shooting in Texas. Without even doing anything, I was back in national headlines thanks to him. All of the attention these liberals were giving me wound up getting the attention of the firearms manufacturer that made my rifle that I used in the graduation photo. I was reached out to by Palmetto State Armory and they said, hey, we saw that was our rifle in your photo. Want to come down to our engineering facility to build your own? So I absolutely said yes. That was probably one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had over the last year. They flew me down to South Carolina along with my brother and my fiance Justin and let us tour their facility, build a rifle, and even shoot machine guns. The coolest part was that they made a custom lower for my AR-15 that had an engraving of my graduation photo. They never asked for anything in return, never told me I had to do any promos for them, and were some of the nicest people I've ever met in my whole life. It must be that Southern hospitality. They even had my back when it felt like the whole world was against me and did it out of the goodness of their heart. And PSA has been my favorite firearms company ever since. But right when I got back from South Carolina, I found myself making headlines as soon as I got off the plane because I sarcastically challenged David Hogg to an arm wrestle to decide the fate of the Second Amendment. I had already offered to debate him, but that got nowhere. So I figured if he has the time to share insults about me, then he certainly has time to talk about how he plans on taking our guns. The point of the challenge was to point out the hypocrisy of gun grabbers, that they say they're against gun violence, but want the government to point theirs at us. Because let's be honest, when your arms are that tiny, you're not going to be taking people's guns yourself. And even though gun grabbers like Hogg and Gonzalez would get away with promoting disgusting insults about me, of course, the liberal media decided to selectively report on my arm wrestle challenge, but not the things they shared about me. So what happened? I got more death threats, more hate, and more Hollywood actors attacking me on Twitter. What these people never actually caught on to was that every time they piled on to attack me, my following grew larger and larger. And because of this, I was invited to speak in front of hundreds at a gun rally down in Florida last summer. And ironically, David Hogg was throwing a rally right down the road that same day, so I went over there to try to have a conversation with him about guns, and he ran away from me. There we go. I then started making more videos for Liberty Hangouts, since I was already doing that before my graduation photo went viral while I was a student here at Kent. 
And of course, these videos, paired with all the dozens of photos I posted with firearms, didn't make liberals happy that I was still around on social media. Nor did they like that I was standing up for actual women's rights and female empowerment. I was sent over 300 death threats on my birthday. And in the past year, I have received two phone calls from the FBI about credible threats against my life. It's so amazing that when I stand up for the Second Amendment, they think threatening me will shut me up, but all it did was prove exactly why we need firearms in the first place. That was no more apparent than when I hosted another open carry event at Kent State in September of last year. I organized a walk on campus with the same goals in mind as my one in April, to talk to students about why their right to self-defense matters here on campus. But we were never actually able to do this because hundreds of Antifa decided to violently protest the event and block us from walking through campus. They really thought they won by preventing a five foot four blonde girl from walking around to talk about the second amendment. But all they did was prove my point for me. All they did was prove how gun owners are peaceful and the gun grabbing left is violent. All they did was prove that students on campus do need to have firearms because their life could be at risk if they have different opinions than their peers. And in fact, the Kent State Administration proved our point too that very same day. The event was never supposed to even be a walk. We were supposed to be right here on the K talking to students like we did in April. But they wanted to charge us $14,000 in an attempt to keep us away from the campus. But that didn't keep us away. And all it did was show the administration's bias against conservative students. They even tried charging my friends thousands of dollars again in November just to bring me back to campus to speak. And now Kent State is facing a lawsuit over it and had to get rid of their policy that let them charge security fees to student groups. I'm so hopeful that one day soon Kent State will change their campus carry policies, but it is satisfying to know that my activism has at the very least resulted in them getting rid of their security fees because now that means conservatives on campus can't be discriminated against like we were. During my journey over the last year, there were a lot of people who tried to shut me down, intimidate me, and belittle me. But none of their attempts to silence me have worked, and I was able to turn a photo into a career. I was able to turn a mere 500 followers into 600,000 in just one year. And even though I graduated with a degree in biology, now I get to travel the country doing what I love. Now I'm invited to speak at rallies, I'm invited to college campuses, and I produce content almost on a daily basis for InfoWars and Liberty Hangout. The left's hatred of a woman unafraid to stand up for conservative values even landed me in California this February, where I had the chance to speak about the Second Amendment to Logan Paul's 18 million YouTube subscribers. Why do you feel the need to own that level of <clears throat> firepower? <clears throat> because I want to. I didn't know it at the time, but my graduation photo was more than just a message. It was the opportunity of a lifetime. I thought my graduation photo would be the one time the world would get to hear what I had to say, but now the world can hear my message every time I upload a video or write a tweet. And it's so empowering to know that this would have never been the case if I let the bullies kick me when I was down. It's so empowering to know that there are now people who look up to me as someone who can inspire them not to let others dictate how they have to think or feel. I truly hope that my story can go beyond politics and encourage others to never give in to bullies and not be afraid to stand up for what they really believe in. I hope that my story can encourage others to understand the value of family. A lot of my friends abandoned me over the past year, but family is forever. And I hope that my story can highlight the importance of finding someone who loves you unconditionally just as Justin has been by my side and always giving me encouragement since the day I met him. I'm Caitlin Bennett, and if you thought I was going to go away after taking my graduation photo last year, you were dead wrong. I'm not going away anytime soon, and I will always stand up for what I believe in.